I know that a lot of times that all the organizations in the cultural center work for the same amount of money through the African American Programming Fund. Um, and one thing that I want to see changed is I want more cultural organizations to dip in to the cultural programming or committee um, and use those funds so that it can increase the funds for you all. The next thing that I want to talk about is how that you all have already been a benefit to the Student Government Association. Um, through the Cultural Center, they started using OrgSync, which helps unite all of the RSOs that are in that umbrella. Well, through your all's leadership, SGA has now adapted that throughout the entire university. So it's very fitting that bridging the gap is the theme for tonight, because with your all's help, we have now helped the entire university and all of the RSOs on campus. Some of the things that I want to commend um, student affairs on, um, there are two ma major things that I want to commend them on. One is this new program that is going to give leadership certificates for RSOs. Um, it's a program in which you can attend about five events varying from raising retention rates um, to helping plan events, to all of the things that you need to learn about, how to make your RSOs or fraternities, sororities successful on campus. Um, and with that, if you attend so many, you, you get a leadership certificate that helps your RSO and, and really makes it shine on campus as one of the premier RSOs here on campus. The next thing I want to talk about is Student Affairs gave a great deal of effort um, and I want to commend them on being able to bring back all Divine Nine, um, and they're coming in the spring. I'm very proud of that from Student Affairs. I'm also very proud of the university as a whole. Um, the University of Louisville is exemplary in their leadership on diversity. Um, we are the only university that repeatedly meets all of the standards. We go eighth grade almost every year for our university, whereas no other university in the state does that. So the University of Louisville has a strong commitment to diversity. The last thing I want to talk about that is something I'm going to need help with, um, and I really want to hear your all's feedback on over the next few months, and that is I realize that the cultural center is starting to be run down. It needs to be revamped. And frankly, we need a new diversity center. This is something I've worked on with Provost Will and Gantz and President Ramsey. Um, and I want to commend them as well because they have shared this commitment and desire to make a diversity center happen here on campus. We have several of the vice presidents of our university working towards that goal and creating the plan to hopefully, hopefully fulfill that in the future. So throughout the next coming weeks, if you think of something that you really would like to see within a new cultural center, let me know about it, send me an email, and I'd be glad to help in any way I can. The last thing I want to talk about, um, we will be videoing tonight's event. Um, so if you have friends that were unable to be here tonight, make sure that they see the video. We're going to post it on the SGA website. Um, it's very important that everybody on the entire university hears Janessa's speech tonight because the Cultural Center is one of the highlights of this university and diversity is a very strong commitment to SGA. Um, this year is one of the first years we've had a diversity director um, that deals specifically with cultural RSOs here on campus. So with that I want to thank you all again for allowing me to speak here tonight and hopefully we can bridge the gap between all RSOs and all students at this university. Thank you. Thank you, President Brazell. That, that is, um, that is one guy that you want to know. If you don't know him yet on campus, if you haven't interacted with him, especially you guys over here, uh, make sure you make make it a point uh, to get to know your SGA leadership. Uh, what I would really love to see is the predecessor of Curtis somewhere in this room. I would love to see something like that happen. Um, and also, if you couldn't tell in his voice how passionate he is about this topic, uh, there is other passion in this room. And, I, and the other SGA leaders, if you're present, if you could raise your hand so we can make sure we acknowledge you. If you're part of SGA, raise your hand. There you go. There we go. Give a round of applause for being here. Today. We are fortunate to have an SGA that's uh, extremely inclusive uh, of what we're trying to do. Uh, and, and Janessa Siegel has forged good relationships with all of them. Uh, and so it's, it's with great honor that I'm able to welcome her uh, to the podium 
to give her address to, to talk about her thoughts about the, the association, but also the state of affairs for African Americans and others on campus. Uh, Janessa is a leader amongst leaders, hands down. Uh, if you haven't met this woman, uh, you need to. Uh, somebody who follows my brother as ABS president has to fill some pretty big shoes in my book, and, and she does that and, and beyond. Uh, I'm very pleased to be working with her, and, and as an author who says that luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Right? And at the end of last year, we were in search of somebody to really lead the association. Well, there was nobody else, nobody else more prepared than this woman. Having lead, led the NPHC over last year and being a member of the Council of Presidents at ABS uh, and being a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, she has shown over and over again her ability to lead, her ability to follow, and ability to really set goals that are going to make, make things change on this campus. So please give a round of applause for Ms. Janessa Siegel. Hey, wow, that introduction. I can't follow that. But um, good evening, everyone. I'm so happy and so honored that you all have come to hear me speak and to hear the things that we do have for you all this year. It's amazing that I look out and see all of your faces because I see so much potential in each and every one of you. I see the future CEO of Apple, yes, I said Apple, Walmart, all those big corporate places, you all are those leaders. They always say we're the leaders of tomorrow, but you all are the leaders of today. Um, again, my name is Janessa Siegel and I'm the current president of the Association of Black Students. And before I go any further, I would love to introduce my lovely executive board. Um, when I just say your name, you can stand. So we have Chelsea Owens, who is the Vice President of RSO Affairs. You can come out. We have Sarah Feaster, who is the Vice President of RSO Development. Valencia Richards, who is our Secretary. Victoria Edwards, who is our Treasurer. And I have a picture. <laughs> Deontay Tinson, who is our director of marketing, he couldn't be here with us tonight because he is working. But all of us, we are all working hard, very, very hard to be a voice for you all on this campus. Our mission statement, if you would turn to the PowerPoint. Our mission of ABS is to stimulate and promote the intellectual, political, social, and cultural health of the campus and community as a whole with a focus on the issues impacting African American students and other, other underrepresented groups. So in a nutshell, we are basically a voice for you all. We are here to help you all, we are here to uplift you all, and we are here to encourage you all to be leaders on this campus. Not only are we a voice for you all, we also provide a lot of resources and opportunity. A big issue that was facing a lot of our minority RSOs is recognition. We have nearly 2,500 African American students that go to UofL, but with the 30 black RSOs we have, they might have five, 10 members, maybe even 20. And so my question always was, where are all of the students? Well, when, when I would ask them about a lot of our African American RSOs, they were like, I've never heard of that before. And so I realized they just don't know that we exist. And so what ABS is really trying to do is get the word out about our black RSOs and really try to encourage them, to encourage our students to get involved. Not only are we here to help our students get involved, we're also here to develop leaders. Under ABS, we provide leadership training. So our students will learn how to write proposals for funding and how to create effective and very well events. And they will also have access to funding. Under ABS, we are the governing body of the African American Programming Fund. So a lot of our partnered organizations can apply for this fund and they can conduct a lot of events on campus. Some of the events that have been funded by the AAPF is our National Panhellenic Council Step Show, Black Men's Appreciation Dinner, Black Women's Appreciation Dinner, Miss Black U of Will, and a lot, a lot more. Not only do we provide funding and training, we also provide a campus community that our students can come to. I know back in the day, ABS used to have general body meetings where students could come and voice their opinions. Well, we kind of fell off from that, but this year we're actually trying to bring it back. We're not going to call them general body meetings. It's more like an open talk session so that we can talk about the issues on campus. And not only are we going to talk about them, we're going to find ways to fix them. 
I'm a firm believer that if you see a problem, then you should be able to see the solution to the problem because there's always a solution to every single problem out there. And so this year, we are really going to try to bring that um, campus community to all of you, as well as providing leadership training and providing opportunities for you all. Now, we're not going to try to take away from any of our partnered RSOs. We will have a few events this year, but all of our events are to help our RSOs currently. Um, last year, under Marcus Blakeman's administration, they really focused on supporting the RSOs and helping them develop within themselves. And like uh, Curtis mentioned earlier, last year all, all of our um, black RSOs under ABS were had to join OrgSync. Now OrgSync is basically like Facebook kind of, only it's for RSOs. And so you can find out calendar of events, e-board members, if you just want general information about these organizations, all of that is on OrgSync. I highly encourage each and every one of you to join it because since the whole entire university is going onto OrgSync, you'll be able to access them quicker than going onto the website and going through all the little click this, go here and stuff. It's very confusing, trust me, I've tried. So definitely, definitely try to be under OrgSync because there's a lot of resources through that. But along with um, being under OrgSync, we are encouraging our RSOs to do that, but this year we're gonna try to take it a step further. Our goals for 2011 and 2012, our first goal is to help our RSOs thrive on their own. Earlier I did mention that we are the governing body for the African American Programming Fund. And while that is a wonderful resource on campus, we want our RSOs to be able to be self-sufficient. And so through our leadership training, we will be able to help them write better proposals and we're also going to encourage them to start applying for other funding through other resources. Our goal also is to find someone to help our organizations learn how to fundraise. Because if you can fundraise a lot of money, then you'll have to ask for money from other people. And I'm just gonna make a plug in here right now. If any of our minority RSOs here have not attended a leadership summit, you need to quickly get in touch with someone in student activities because you are not in compliance right now. So <laughs> you definitely need to go and make sure that you all stay up to date with that. These leadership summits are meant to help us and they're meant to give us information that we can take back to our organizations. So when you receive these emails, I know it's a lot of emails, trust me, I get them all the time, but they are meant to help us. So definitely attend these summits, fill out the paperwork, and stay in compliance with the university because you won't be able to host events if you're not. So remember that. Um, but along with helping our organizations thrive, we're really trying to encourage more collaborations this year. Um, lately, over the past year, I've noticed a lot of co collaborations between the Black RSOs, which I'm extremely excited about, very, very excited about. But I would love to see more collaborations with the Black RSOs stepping out of just Black RSOs. Um, we have SGA, we have SAB here. They are here to provide resources for us. They are here to collaborate with us. They are here to do more, more programs with us. How many of you all know that we have almost 240 recognized student organizations on campus? Yeah, not a lot of people knew that. And more than likely, a lot of those organizations were meant for the same thing. So why not join an organization that's meant for the same thing as you and host the program? You'll have more resources, you'll bring in more people, and you'll have a bigger and better event. That is something that we are really, really trying to encourage this year. It's time to step out of the box and bridge the gap. Finally, we really want to start encouraging more African American students to get involved on campus. It's wonderful to join a black RSO. Wonderful, wonderful, because we do need more numbers and more recruitment and more retention. But I don't see a big African American presence in a lot of other organizations like SGA or SAB or the SOSers or the Cardinal Host. Have any of y'all heard of those organizations at all? Not a lot, exactly, not a lot of people even knew that they existed. These organizations provide so many networking opportunities, leadership building opportunities. They are, there's endless opportunities that you can have from getting involved on campus. Studies have shown that students that get involved while they're in college tend to have higher GPAs, they tend to have a higher graduation rate, and they tend to be more aggressive as far as their career is concerned. So, 
you already know how to have an interview because you have to take an interview to get into an organization. Or you already know how to write a proposal because you have to write a proposal to ask for funding in an organization. Or you can even leave your group at your um, business because you have to leave groups within your organization. Getting involved isn't just something to do on the whim, it's something that actually helps you develop as a person. And so, us with ABS, we're really trying to encourage our African American students to start getting involved so that they can have a stronger presence on campus. Um, ooh, I lost my train of thought, sorry y'all. <laughs> but we are really trying to help you all become the leaders that we know you are. Like I said earlier, we always hear we're the leaders of tomorrow, but we're actually the leaders of today. I'm a marketing major, and a lot of marketing companies, they aren't trying to market to the older people. No offense, no offense. <laughs> but if you look at everything, it's very young and sleek and attractive to us. Why? Because we're going to be here longer. And they're trying to get us to go to them. And so we're not, we should not wait until tomorrow, until after we graduate and years down the line to get involved. The time to get involved is here and it's now. The time to start meeting people is here and it's now. College is supposed to be the most, the greatest years of your life. In ABS, we are trying to make sure that these are the greatest years of your life. So, to make sure that these are the greatest years of your life, we are going to actually open up the floor for comments and questions. But before we open up the floor, I would just like to say that if you are interested in getting involved in any organizations, like I said, you can go to OrgSync and make a profile on there and you can get information about them. And ABS, we are actually having an open meeting. So if you would like to get involved with ABS, you can come to the Cultural Center on September 26th at six o'clock and you'll be able to get to know more about us and you will also be able to know how you can get involved with ABS. So I thank you all so much for coming and I hope that I was able to say something to really encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone and bridge the gap. So thank you.